The glens, nine glacial valleys molded in the ice age, cutting their way through the Antrim mountains towards the Irish Sea. Situated in the northeast of Northern Ireland, they were once part of the ancient kingdom of Dalriada that included parts of Scotland, often visible just across the water. The kingdom is no more, but many of its myths and traditions survive. Ah! Told across four seasons, this is the story of moors and farmland, forests and rivers, of a proud people fighting to preserve their way of life. Spring begins hesitantly, but soon winter shackles will be thrown off as the glens embrace longer days and the strengthening sun. From the high hills to the jagged coastlines, there are furtive signs of new life everywhere. It's been a long, dark winter, but a new year has begun. The southernmost glen is Glenarm. Since the 16th century, this castle has been the seat of the Earls of Antrim, the Macdonalds. It's late February, and there are signs that spring is just around the corner. But inside the castle, Winter has left its mark. Now I'm going to the, the roof. Oh, we're going to the roof to see. Do you want to come and see this? Do you want to come and see this just so you're this? This patch of damp, you do. In charge of day-to-day -day maintenance is the housekeeper, Elaine Boyle, and Glen Arms estate manager, Adrian Morrow. Oh, that's my exercise. This is Adrian's gym. <laughs> do you think we would need to get the painter in to do that? It seems to be the roof where the problem is, you know, oh. and before you know, it would just be a oh. complete disaster. You're there, mess. You get the light on. That's, you know you're heading for trouble when you come up any here. <laughs> There's going to be something. Ooh. So I think the problem is uh, this lead tree you now has, has just run its life, but look at things. I can see already a, a dish, and it here, which means the timbers underneath that have collapsed and rotted. So this is all going to have to be ripped out and new timber put in there. That there could be a 30 or a 40,000 pound job. And you know, we're a small team and that's a lot of money. That's always been the, the nature of the beast here. I'm used to it. I mean, if you look at the four turrets there, in 1982, I think it was, the steel weather vanes had corroded and it exploded the sandstone, so there was no option other than completely take them down and rebuild them. I was building my house at the same time. It cost me uh, the same price to build my house than it did to do the repair on one of those turrets. So each time I come up here and look at those four turrets, I can see four bungalows, one in each corner. Oh well, money, money, money. <laughs> just wouldn't matter much money you bring into this place, it just goes into a hole. But that's, that's the historic fabric. It needs a lot of maintaining and looking after. It's March. In a few weeks, the grouse on Glenwary Moor will begin to nest. Before they do, head gamekeeper Alex Rogers wants to get an idea of how many breeding pairs have survived the winter. Are you ready? 
there are hundreds of acres of moor to search in the next few days. So Alex has enlisted the help of some highly trained assistants. We've got Gina, best, best pointer in Northern Ireland. And then we've got the two Irish red setters there as well. Poppy and then Rusty. The grouse are going to start forming eggs. Some of them may even be nesting as well, so, yeah, we like to get this done before April. You'll find plenty of this round here. So that's your standard grouse droppings. And if you've seen plenty of sign of droppings, then you have got grouse. We're going to head down and then try and get it, because the thing is, with, with the pointers and setters, we have to... Well, we don't have to, but... It's better to count with the wind in our faces. That way the scent's blowing in, in towards the dog, so the dog gets a better scent. The dog's quartering the ground, so the dog's using the wind to its advantage. So it's quartering from right to left, up and down, just waiting to catch that scent of a grouse. Once it does, It'll stop dead, so it'll start pointing. The dog started setting now, so it's telling us that there's a bird in here somewhere. It could be a grouse or it could be a snipe. They're actually they're spotting us as we're coming up, so they're lifting. They're not sitting tight today, so it's quite hard to actually get them right in front of the dog. So just keep seeing grouse head out in the distance that we've, that we've seen us. So it's quite frustrating because we're wanting to be counting pairs, and sometimes today we're seeing a single bird get up, and then we're getting to where that bird got up, and then another bird's got up, you know, from the same area. So you, I mean, you can class that as a pair, but. It's just, it's better to see them both together. That tells you that they're a, a real good, solid pair, so they're definitely going to mate. It's not just the moors that are eagerly waiting for spring's promise of new beginnings. The villages that hug the coastline rely on the influx of visitors that better weather can bring. Five years ago, in Cushendall, retired teacher Stephen O'Hara started up a cafe with his wife. The Glen is a funny place. You have to live here a long time before you're a local. I've only lived in the Glens for 50 years of my 55 years, so I'm afraid I'm still what's known as a runner. This story concerns a very important figure in Irish mythology known as Oshan. People may not know Oshan very well, but they will know his father. His father was Finn McCool. This is no ordinary cafe. It's a storytelling cafe, embracing an art form long celebrated in the Glens. How many Glensmen does it take to change a light bulb? It takes five. One to actually change the light bulb and the other four to sing about what a great light bulb the old one was. <laughs> she said, there is one way. If you take my horse and you go back to Ireland and you stay in the saddle, at no point can you dismount. You will be able to visit your country and then come back to me. So he was riding around Ireland, but of course in 300 years, the whole country was inhabited by a race of weak and puny Irish men, men like me. <laughs> he spied a group of these ten puny Irish men trying to move an enormous boulder. And he leaned over from his horse to help them, and as he did so, the girth of the saddle snapped, the saddle slipped, and he fell to the earth, and he immediately aged 300 years. Now these men, they carried him like a king and they took him here to Cushendall and they buried him in Foshan's grave. Which some people, archaeologists for example, say that it's a Neolithic passage tomb. But we know what it really is. Thank you.
The glens are full of stories of brave warriors from the distant past. Today's fighters carry sticks, not spears, but their battles are no less intense. Come over and hurt him and be a massive part of Cushion Dog. At underage, you're walking down the street with your hurt in your hand, and anywhere you look, somebody has a hurdle. Let's go, come on, go on, go on, go on. Orla and Amy play for Rury Oak Camogie team. There's just a couple of months of training left until the new season. So normally at the start of the season, we are really intense few months. It normally consists of like strength and conditioning work and a lot of running, trying to build up like your aerobic endurance for the year ahead. So it's normally quite brutal. We know it's horrible. We know it's horrible. Two more to go. Get up the hill. Get up the hill. Come on, play, play. He actually kept it quite PG tonight compared to what it usually is. Yeah, it is quite good tonight. It's like more, your lungs are burning like. Yeah. Like I feel as if I'm swollen blood. Yeah. We were in a championship final two years ago, which was probably one of the most proudest moments of my Kamogi career. And hopefully we could be there again this September would be a massive stepping stone for our club. From Glen Arm in the south to Fairhead in the north, spring has arrived in the glens. It's an ancient story slowly unfolding to the same rhythms year after year. But this spring of 2020 is also a spring like no other. The coronavirus is the biggest threat this country has faced for decades. You must stay at home. We will immediately close all shops selling non-essential goods and other premises, including libraries, playgrounds and outdoor gyms and places of worship. The way ahead is hard. Camogie pitches of Cushion Doll will stay silent. The season pushed back and all training cancelled. At Glen Arm, there will also be no Easter visitors. We had our plans laid out for our tulip festival. We had 10,000 tulips planted. All of a sudden, COVID-19 arrived at our door. In Carnlock, Robert will not be welcoming back tourists to his family's caravan park. It was weird, you know, walking around and, and no one being here, but the friends and family that were vulnerable, it was just a little scary. Robert had just opened a cafe with his wife, Tiffany. It's also shut until further notice. In the spring and summer is really when we start to see the village come alive. Yes, tourism is good for the village in general, but tourism is bad for a pandemic. We just shut the whole place down pretty much overnight. We were devastated because our expectations were so much different than what the reality has turned out to be. But not all industries in the glens can grind to a halt. On the Devlin's farm in Glenshesk, they are lambing, and Frank is finishing the early morning shift. His son, Owen, will take over in a couple of hours. So we got sort of half five or six, go around the things, check them, and then come up for breakfast. I would do the night shift, I'd go right through to normally about half three or four, depending on how busy it is sometimes. It can be up to five o'clock. A few weeks sees the heaviest of it by. Um, after that, you can sort of ease off the night shifts a bit. Um, probably six weeks, we'll get rid of the lamb completely. So normally you'd want front legs coming first with the head 
sort of in between, just sitting on top of the legs. Um, in that case, the head was turned back on itself. So there's no way that you could have lambed that. So the lamb, if left alone, the lamb probably would die inside her, and then she would probably get poisoned by the lamb. A lot of ewes, especially first timers, might lamb their lambs and then just go up and walk away because they don't know any different. So sometimes it's a matter of holding the sheep with her head down to the lambs because her own lambs will have a very distinct smell. That's where the bonds be between the lamb and the ewe. A few miles away on Fair Head, the McBrides are also welcoming new life. Farming went on as normal, busy times, and we were distracted from the news. It could be a bit all right. As well as new calves, there are over 700 lambs. They're all lambed indoors. <coughs> they have maybe up to 40 ewes lamb in one day. If you're on a really big day, you could have up to 50. At that other time of the year, we're usually in lockdown up here anyway, so you always forgot about it. Having Lamond to work through that was definitely good. I enjoy Lamond. After a cold, long winter, it's nice to see Lamond sporting about and playing with each other. It's good to see that life coming back at the farm again. It's April, a month into lockdown, and a warm, dry spring has turned the glens into a riot of colour. At Tivera View Allotments in Cushendall, there are potatoes to be planted. They will be harvested in autumn, as they have been since Margaret McKillop set up the allotments with other Cairns Estate residents seven years ago. When we first got locked down, obviously, you only had an hour to come out and um, socialise, so most people were using their hour to come up to the allotments. When we started the project, it was more to bring the, the community together and, you know, to help with the mental health side. You never perceived that we would be standing here in the middle of a pandemic, but thankfully we've had this space to, to enjoy through it. On the grouse moors of Glenwary Hill, it's a crucial time. Hidden in the undergrowth, endangered ground nesting birds are now incubating their eggs, watched over by gamekeeper Alex Rogers. I've always sort of isolated being up here in the hills and stuff, you, you know, you'd be lucky if you saw anyone or spoke to anyone in, in a week. So, I always like to get my hide set up first. So it's really important that you get a good, a good backdrop. So with it, where it could be a dry stone wall, it could be a hedgerow or a, a run of trees or anything like that. Alex's job now is to protect the nests from one of the moor's most prolific predators, corvids. It's uh, not COVID, COVID. So the, your corvids are, uh, are like your crow family. So your, your rook, your carrion crow, your hooded crow, jackdaw, magpie and things like that. At the minute, I'm just setting my decoys up. These particular ones here, work really well. These have like almost like a felt cover on the back, so uh, from a distance they look really dark and they're, they're, they're very sort of like easily noticed. A crow, it'll see your decoys from quite, you know, quite far away and it'll be attracted to them straight away. This time of year, it's so crucial that we get on top of the population because they're so damaging to the ground nesting birds. Reducing predator numbers is a difficult but necessary job in conservation, vital for the re-establishment of endangered species, especially in breeding season. I know 
the sheer damage a crow can do to uh, a ground nesting bird. I don't find it a, a, a privilege, you know, to take an animal's life. Uh, it's a necessity. There's a lot of responsibility and you, you want to do it as quickly and as cleanly as you possibly can. It's May. Lambs are growing fast. And a glorious spring has burst out across the glens. In Glenarm, the only people around to enjoy this year's tulip festival are the estate staff. The spring still goes on. The seasonality still runs through. So uh, we did enjoy 10,000 tulips on our own. <laughs> And the garden looked amazing, and there we were standing on our own. The trees was budding. Life still goes on in the glens. So, and that keeps you sane. You do forget about all this wonderful nature around you. But Mother Nature will send you a reminder now and again to lift up your head and look around you and appreciate where you are. And we do do that. The sun beats down. It's one of the driest springs in memory, and only the people of the glens are here to appreciate it. Uh, here we're kind of a little bit naturally cut off, so um, from that point of view, uh, we were kind of lucky. Life was just a lot simpler and slower. And Jacob probably benefited the most from everyone <laughs> because we were obviously at home 24-7, so he thought it was great. <laughs> I certainly did appreciate it, the time, the time that we did have to kind of slow down a little bit. You know, I think everyone probably was questioning, why do we do it? Why do we run around and create so much hassle and panic and fuss? Whenever you see the lambs in the sunshine running across the wee hill, all sporting about, kicking the legs, and just generally having good fun, gives you a wee smile to the fair. <laughs> see the wee lambs that come down, look at her now. It's late May, and a slight easing of COVID 19 restrictions sees a tentative return of visitors to the glens. One of the nicest parts is, is deciding what you're actually going to paint. Artist Audrey Kyle from Island McGee has come to Glenariff Forest Park. Glenariff is known as the queen of the glens, and spring is when she reveals her full majesty. The inspiration just comes from the wildlife and also from nature and the feeling that you get from the freedom and the, you know, everything being reborn. The trees were acid green, it was just, it was beautiful. There were people about obviously enjoying the, the spring day, which was, which was delightful. And there were people swimming in the waterfall. And um, that's what gave me the, the idea, rather than just go for a waterfall scene, to actually include a memory in it. So my, uh, my palette changes as the seasons change. So for this painting, there's a lot of acid greens in there and lots of bright uh, tones. It's June, nearly summer, and more COVID-19 restrictions on travel and hospitality are lifting. Good news for Robert and Tiffany in Carnlock, whose business relies on the tourist trade. We're starting to see it pick up. We opened the coffee shop for takeaways about four weekends ago, and we said Saturday and Sundays only. And in that time, we have seen actually a lot of footfall in the village. I think as, as restrictions have loosened up, we've seen people starting to take, you know, their day trip out to the coast. Bye. Hold it. 
We're extending our hours this week um, to include Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, but I need to plan orders, so I'm taking averages from before we um, closed. Okay, go ahead. Just trying to come up with some sort of predicted amount so that I can get orders out to our bakers, although it's so challenging to predict what customers will be after. You know, on the caravan park sort of things, we're opening again, and the caravanners seem to be really excited, so they'll be down on Friday. It's even more special this year just because of, of what we've been through in the spring. It's been a weird three months, um, especially the weather we've had. It's been perfect for the caravanners to be down enjoying the, the sites, but unfortunately they haven't been able to get down, so yeah, um, it'll be good to see them back again. That's a double glazed central heated van. Um, it's only nine years old, so that could be there for the next 15 years. It was a little scary there for a while when we didn't know the kind of length of the period of lockdown, whether we're going to lose the entire season. So it's, uh, it is a bit of a relief to get back open again and um, start to see some uh, turnover and revenue coming back in again. Hopefully, uh, we can continue to open things up and get the businesses back up and running. Keep us uh, going through this year and, and then we'll see what next year brings. There was a lot of concern that the virus we brought into the area. I think that'll probably still be there, that's just not going to disappear overnight. But tourism is a lifeblood down here for a lot of people. so there is a need to get it back up and running in a measured way. It's been a strange spring in the Glens. It's beauty bearing witness to the struggles of the people who have made the Glens their home. People like Stephen O'Hara at his storytelling cafe, whose future is still uncertain. Social distancing rules. In a three metre wide shop, it's difficult to get people socially distant, mm -hmm. and it would mean we couldn't serve enough people to make it profitable to open. So we're, we're sort of hanging on as long as we can. But obviously, there's a limit to how long we can go on financially. Owning your own business and having regular people who depend on you, it gives you a sense of purpose. And without them, it's difficult to have a sense of purpose. It's affected everything. It's affected every aspect of life. I hope we don't lose the ability to put our arms around somebody. I hope we don't lose the good things. I don't think we're ready yet for telling stories about 2020. Uh, but it, in the fullness of time, we will.